Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at the Dragon Lords, Dragon of the Month set. This will be a series of videos. I'm going to show all the Dragon Lords that uh, I acquired when this set came out in 1984 to 85. Uh, today I'm going to feature the chromatic dragons, the red, the black, the white, the green, and the blue. I'm going to show the dragons, talk a little bit about them. I mean, after all, half the game is named for dragons. So here we go, a little look at evil dragons and uh, Dragon Lord's take on them back in the mid-80s. Okay, here we have the five chromatic dragons as presented by Dragon Grenadier in the Dragon Lord series in 1984 to 85. The idea behind this set was you got one dragon offered per month. They were about $12 each. And if you bought all 12, you got a 13th for a premium and stuff like that. I'll go into that in a bit. But it was launched by Grenadier uh, in 1984. One of actually three series they did. They did a follow-up in 85 to 86. They, weren't, they were still calling them Dragons of the Month, but they weren't really dragons. They were wyverns and other things, and the sculpts weren't that good. And then they did another Dragon Launch, Dragon Lords 2, that they launched in 1989. Uh, my wife and I weren't interested in either one of those by that time. Honestly, buying 12 of these over 12 months... We had a little bit of buyer's fatigue by the time we were done. But, that being said, I love these dragons. Uh, I love the sculpts. My two favorite sculpts actually come here in the chromatic. The green. I love his head reared back like he's just about to breathe on something. My second favorite sculpt is the black. I just like the way he's surging out ready to attack whoever's intruding in his domain. The other sculpts are nice. The, the white, I'll show right now. I, I just, they did a nice job on all of these. The red doesn't have his wings. Well, there's a problem. I've been trying for a long, long time to figure out how to attach his wings. Super glue will not do it. These wings are heavy. They're metal. They're, I can't figure out a way to support them. I'm going to have to find some kind of epoxy. I can't solder them because I don't want to mess up the figures. I'm going to have to figure out an epoxy. And then the last one is the blue. I painted this guy back in the day. Never did finish his base. Got to get around to it one of these years. So the idea was that you would buy a dragon every month for $12. And then you would send in your proofs of purchase, which is right there, that little dome thing right there. And when you sent in all 12 proofs of purchase, you got a free 13th figure who was the Dragon Lord. Um, the 13th figure, there was, it was free with the 12 proofs of purchase, but you also had to uh, send some money for postage. Uh, it's five or six dollars at the time. Uh, honestly, I saw some pictures of the figure before it was released. I wasn't impressed. Uh, it looked like a sculpt that maybe they had decided to not issue as part of this group. Uh, it had a dragon uh, with a guy riding on his back. Uh, and I didn't want the dragon elf or human or whatever it was, uh, the guy riding on the dragon, rather, to be the dragon lord, because that's not what dragons are about. Dragons are their own lords. Half the game is named for them, for crying out loud. <clears throat> so, well, my wife and I looked at that, and we looked at a little bit more expense after collecting all 12 of these for a year, we both said, nah, I'm not interested. So we passed on it, and honestly, it's not a decision I've ever regretted. Uh, that figure is still around. He was reissued as like a, a war dragon, something along those lines. Uh, he's he's around. Uh, it's nobody I'm interested in acquiring. These molds, when Grenadier went out in 96, these molds were bought by a Span Spanish company called Merliton. And uh, some of these are available on their website, but they come from Spain. I don't know the currency exchange, and I have no idea what the shipping is. So if you decide to take it, you know, good luck. And uh, if you find out, you know, let me know. But um, a little bit more about these guys. I'm only featuring the, the chromatic dragons today. In a future video, I'll, feel, I'll put out the metallics. And then Bahamut and Tiamat. They were all featured in this, although Bahamut and Tiamat, for copyright reasons, weren't called that. So, as we know, dragons, they each have their different kind of breath weapon. Black dragon has acid. 
White Dragon has Frost or Cold. Red Dragon, of course, that's the ever-popular fire. The Green Dragon breathes Chlorine. And, of course, the Blue Dragon breathes Lightning. I love dragons. Uh, I honestly think in uh, first edition D&D, they didn't quite get the love they should have. I think that more is more a consequence that the Monster Manual, being the first of the advanced Dungeons & Dragons books to be published, uh, suffered a little bit because it was still working its way out of the original D&D. And consequently, I think the dragons were kind of weak. There were also rules in the uh, original first edition stuff of where you could subdue a dragon. Instead of hitting a dragon with the sharp edge of your sword, you just whack it on the hiney. With the flat of your sword, you could subdue it enough that you could bully it, literally, into giving up its treasure without having to actually kill it. We never played the subduel rules. Uh, I never liked them. I don't like dragons being like that. Uh, my dragons are fearsome foes, and frankly, when 2nd Edition dropped, specifically 2nd Edition Dragons, I took 2nd Edition Dragons and never went back. I had already bumped dragons in my campaign long since. I bumped my dragons early in probably 81, and uh, it lined up very nicely with what had been done in 2nd Edition. Uh, as I've said before, I consider 1st and 2nd Edition kind of interchangeable. I've never had a problem with, with moving stuff from one to the other. So the dragons, as they are presented in second, are much stronger, much higher hit dice, better armor class, more hit points, just better all the way around, better magic skills, uh, goes by size increments, things like that. I, I enjoyed what they did, and I did adopt it into my campaign. So dragons are very fierce in my campaign. So I'm going to show a couple of the 25mm uh, figures that were out at the time these dragons were out. These are 25 millimeter. They are quite a bit uh, smaller compared to current dragon figures, but that's okay. To me, these are adult scary dragons. I know that there are huge figures out there now from WizKids and, and others that are just enormous and you know five and six times as big as these, um, and they look gorgeous. I, I love them. I love the paint jobs. I love everything about them, except the price tag. Uh, they're usually around 80 bucks. Some are higher. And honestly, for a figure that's going to see my table twice a year, that's kind of a lot of bank. So that's kind of kept me from buying them. I have these excellent dragons from back in the day, as well as others. Uh, my sons disagree with me. They think dragons should be huge and, and we should invest in the others. To which I say, hey, you guys work. Go ahead and buy them. Uh, no takers yet. So I'm going to set up a couple of uh, little scenes with the different dragons with some of the other figures. You can get an idea what the scale was to the player characters at the time. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. I'm going to move the camera around a little bit, show these little displays I've set up. I put in a lot of walls that might be conjured from different spells. Yeah, just for fun. These figures, the human characters the elves, that kind of thing. They're all from uh, back in the day. They're all old metal figures. Nothing pewter here. These are lead. There we have the black dragon with a magic user conjuring up a baby's clenched fist coming to uh, maybe knock his lights out with a paladin there in the middle and an elf warrior in the back looking to back clean up. Here Got a magic user who's conjured a wall of fire to back off the white dragon standing behind it. And we've got a cleric and a warrior over here. I've got a magic user who's conjured a wall of iron. And there's a couple of thieves that are backing him up, which would probably be a real good reason to have a wall of fire going or wall of iron going. Here I've just got some. Characters fighting the green dragon. And then over here, I've got a wall of stone placed by a magic user to try to keep the red at bay. So you get the idea. The scale was good and is still good for these figures. Uh, this lady is just very nicely detailed and she's not out of scale with the dragon. These dragons would be scary and formidable. I have plenty of the more current 25 mm or 28 millimeter figures. Here's one right here. And they still work well with this, although they are sized a little larger. I'm not picky about that. 
I mix them freely on the table. I'm really doing the older ones just to show what the scale was back in the day. There you have it again. Uh, I think this is pretty cool how the wall obscures the, the white dragon. Would definitely be something to keep the white dragon at bay. And I realized this would all work better in a dungeon setting, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the size was for all these guys. So, there's the wall of iron keeping the blue at bay. Um, this is a another female thief. Actually, she could be a thief or a magic user. And then this is a thief. And you get the idea. So, the idea was to... Uh, have all the dragons, and then you would literally have every dragon you would need at your fingertips, uh, whether good or evil. Uh, today I'm just featuring the, the evil chromatic dragons. Uh, my next video I'm going to feel, feature the five metallics, and I'll go over some of their details and uh, why I like those figures. So that's it for today from page 121. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy seeing these old Grenadier figures come to life on the table. Uh, they still appear in my campaign all the time. I frequently use them, and I don't plan on stopping. So that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you heard, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on page 121.